Hi everybody, in this uh, video we're going to talk about exploring Spark's uh, column methods. So the Spark column class is a vital class for pretty much doing anything in Spark. So mastery of this class, how to instantiate column objects and how to invoke column methods is really vital for being a productive Spark programmer. So this, this post is going to generally follow this Munging Data blog post on the uh, entitled Exploring Spark's Column Methods. So pretty much what we'll do is we'll, we'll talk about how the different ways to instantiate column uh, objects. So how, how do we get an object, a column object in the first place? And then once we understand how to instantiate a column object, we'll look at certain column methods, uh, GT, which is greater than, we'll look at uh, substring, um, and the plus operator, which is a method defined in the column uh, class as well. We'll look at lit, um, is null, is not null, and when and otherwise, which is the best way to build up if and else uh, logic in Spark. So let's dive into the code. Okay, so we're going to start out with just kind of uh, a little data frame. In the first column, uh, there's the superhero, and in the second column, there's the city uh, that that superhero is from. So in our initial example, we're just going to um, take that data frame. We're going to add a column called city starts with new. And the contents of that city starts with new column will be um, a true or false Boolean value. So here we're doing city starts with new. So this part right here, this dollar sign city, uh, instantiates uh, a column object. Once that column object is instantiated, we can call a column method, which is starts with. And starts with takes a, uh, a string as an argument. I actually think it can take any value, but in this case, we're passing a string. So here we can see this first row, the uh, city does start with uh, new, so it re returns true. Um, in this second uh, row, we can see that the city does not start with new, so it's returning false. And in the third row, the city again starts with new, so it returns true. Um, let's take a look at the column docs really quickly. I think I have a link here. Um, it's just so we can see how these work. So the column is a class. It's defined in org Apache Spark SQL column. Uh, in the documentation page, it talks a little bit about all the different ways to instantiate column objects. Instantiating an object means creating an object, so creating an instance of this class, for those of you that are familiar with object-oriented programming. And we can see that starts with is a method defined in this class. So when we instantiate the object here, that's when we can call the starts with method. If we don't instantiate the object, of course, this is going to error, error out because now this is just a regular string, and the regular string probably doesn't have the starts with method. Um, cool. Let's get that running again. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways to instantiate uh, column objects. So this is the one we used in the previous example where we just use the dollar sign, dollar sign city. I wonder if I should make this font bigger. Maybe that's better for those of you guys on YouTube. Um, so this is relying on uh, Spark implicits. So you need to do import spark.implicits.underscore unless your environment does that for you. Uh, the Databricks environment does do that, but if, if you're in the maybe like a text editor, you would need to do that to use the syntax. Uh, another way to instantiate a column object is to take a reference to a data frame and then just use the parentheses and use the column name so we can see that that's creating a column object. And the third way to create a column object is to import a um, SQL function, which is the call function, and then just to pass in that string the, of what you want to instantiate. So here we can see that this is instantiating a column object, this is instantiating a column object as well, this is instantiating a column name object, but it behaves the same as a column object. So you can just basically view these all of these three uh, examples as equivalent. Um, I typically use this one 
the call city, um, but sometimes I use this df city as well. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's move on to another set of examples, uh, another data frame with some numerical data. So in this case, we have our df. Um, the first column is called num, and it has an integer. The second column is called word, and it has strings. We can see one of those strings is null. Okay, so let's take a look at this gt method, which is greater than. Um, so here we have, uh, uh, we're using with column again to append a column. We have, we're appending this number gt5. Uh, here we're instantiating a column object. Then we're calling this gt method with an argument of 5. So let's see what, what this returns. So here in this first row, we can see that the number is greater than 5, so we get true. Uh, in the second row, the number is not greater than 5, so we get false. And in the third row, the number is greater than 5, so we get true. So gt is again going to be defined in this um, file right here. Here we can see it. Um, so in this column class, they're defining a method uh, called gt. Um, of course, we can also use this operator for greater than, and it's going to return the same thing. Uh, cool. Now let's take a look at uh, this substring method. So here we're going to append a column called word first two, and it's going to take uh, the word column, and then it's going to take from characters zero to two, so the first two characters of the word string. Um, so here we can say the first two characters of this word are CA, the first two characters of this word are DO, and then for null it returns null. And this is actually a very important lesson to learn, so all uh, column methods, all Spark SQL functions, whenever they're passed an input of null, they return null. Uh, and that's great because it's really annoying when things throw null pointer exceptions and your code blows up. So when you write native Spark, it's really easy to follow these conventions because that's what every other Spark function, that's the convention that all of the, that, them follow. Uh, when you write UDFs, this is a little harder. We'll, we'll cover that in a different uh, video. But just remember, whenever you write a UDF and the input is null, it should return null, similar to how Spark works. Okay, so now let's take a look and add a num plus five column. And basically what that should do, do is take the number column and add five. So let's see, it looks like my internet's being a little slow. So I'm gonna move over here. Okay, so here we can see we're taking this number column, we're adding five to it. Um, so 10 plus five is 15, four plus five is nine, seven plus five is 12. So here we're using this explicit dot syntax. Um, so we can use, we can use this um, dot plus five. Of course, plus is just gonna be a method defined in the column class. So it's kind of weird to think of operators defined as methods, but it's pretty common in, in Scala. So um, that's one way we could do this. Of course, the much more common, common way of invoking this plus method is with the shortcut uh, syntax. So we can just, instead of using dot and the, you know, we can omit this dot and omit these parentheses, and it kind of makes the, the code a little bit more readable although this does arguably make it harder for readers to understand that this plus is a method defined in the, in the column class. Uh, cool, so this is giving us the same output as expected. Okay, so moving on to the next example, let's say we want to take two divided by the number column. So we want to take two divided by that number column. So let's run this, co this code. 
and we're getting an error found, not found, lit, okay. Import org dot apache dot spark dot sql dot functions dot lit. Okay, so in order to access this lit function, we need to import it first. So we import that function, and then we're, we can use this lit lit function. So this is defined in uh, Spark SQL functions. Um, so here we're going to append a column called uh, two divided by num. We're going to take lit two and divide it by the the number column. So we can see two divided by ten is 0.2, 2 divided by four is 0.5, and two divided by seven is this irrational number. Um, Okay, that makes sense. Let's take a look and see what would happen if we didn't have this uh, lit function. So if we didn't have lit, then this code's actually gonna error out. And now let's see why this is erroring out. So now this is going to be using two divided by, so Scala, the Scala interpreter is gonna think that this is a Scala integer. So rather than using the uh, backslash function defined, defined in the column class, in the Spark column class, uh, Scala is going to think we're using the backslash operator defined in the uh, Scala integer class. Uh, and then it's going to come across with a second argument of column num, and it's just going to get confused. So we need to convert this to into a column object before we can uh, call this method. So before we can call this backslash method. So let's see that. So this lit two, what this should return is a column object. So we can see that lit two is kind of another way of creating a column object for kind of a value that's not changing for a value that's pretty much constant. Um, okay. So if you ever get these, these error messages when you're using uh, the, the, these kind of methods, just make sure to convert it to a, a column object with lit. Okay, so now let's look at the is null method. So is null is going to return true when the value is null, and it's going to return false when the value is not null. We'll append this uh, word is null uh, column, and it's going to return true when, when the word is null and false otherwise. So in this first and second row, we can see that the word is not null, uh, so it's returning false. In this third row, we can see that the word is null, so it returns true. Um, all right, now let's take a look at is not null. So uh, in this case, we're going to do some filtering. So rather than appending a column, we're going to filter out all, all the rows when the word um, value is, uh, is null. So let's take a look at that. So our data frame previously had three rows of data. Now our data frame only has two rows of data because we filtered out uh, the null values. Um, and you know, appending, uh, appending on a column like this where it is null is probably not something you're going to do too much, but filtering out uh, uh, something with null values is something you'll, you'll be doing a lot. OK, so now we want to. Uh, define a third uh, data frame. So this third data frame is going to have two columns. The first column is word one, second column is word two. These are just kind of random words. And now we're going to write this little word comparison algorithm that uh, let's, let's look at it, let's look at the output and then we'll kind of reverse engineer it. But our word comparison algorithm is going to kind of compare the two words and uh, intelligently describe how they're related. Kind of. <laughs> so if word one and word two are the same, this algorithm will return same words. If word one and word two are different and word one it has a greater length than word two, it's going to return word one is longer. And otherwise, it's just going to return I am confused. Our algorithm isn't, isn't going to know what to, what to really return. <clears throat> So let's take a look at how this works and then kind of dive in how this uh, works with, this, with the Spark column methods and also some Spark SQL functions. So here we have a data frame. Uh, we're using with column. We're appending this word comparison uh, column, which makes sense, right? Previously, we had a two column data frame. 
after running this algorithm, we have a, a data frame with three columns. So we're going to use the when function. So when is going to take two arguments. The first is going to be a Boolean condition, and the second is going to be what to return when that Boolean condition is true. So here we're converting word one into a column object. We're converting word two into a column object, and we're using the triple equals uh, operator for equality. So remember, this triple equals is going to be defined in the column class. There's also an EQ method, uh, I believe, or equal to. Uh, all right, looks like it's equal to. Equal to. Uh, so there's also an equal to method. So rather than doing this, we want to be a little bit more obvious, not use any syntactic sugar. We do equal to. And this should work too. So if word one is equal to word two, then we're returning the same words. Uh, now we're saying we're doing a dot when. So this is basically an else if. Uh, if the, the word one uh, length is greater than the word two length, then word one is longer. Again, we are passing into this length. So length is a SQL function. It's taking an argument of a column object. Here we're doing uh, greater than, so this is this is going to return a column object, this entire expression. Uh, uh, length, again, is a SQL function that takes a column object as an argument. Uh, and again, we could use the explicit notation here, greater than, uh, to make, make it clear that this greater than is a column method. Then we're returning word one is longer. And then otherwise, I am confused. Um, OK, so that all makes sense. Uh, so let's do like a final review. I know, I know that we're kind of covering a lot. And I'm like really nerding out with object-oriented programming and how it works in Spark. But this stuff is actually kind of important. So let's look at all the object-oriented and method standing stuff that's being used here. So we have a data frame we're calling with column. So with column is a data frame method. So if we open up the data set class, uh, uh, data frame and data set are pretty much the same thing. We can see that there's going to be a with column method. OK, so that makes sense. Uh, so when and length are SQL functions. So there's two different types of when here. There's this when, and there's this dot when. So in this, in this example, this when, this length, and this length are defined in uh, this org Apache Spark SQL uh, object. So if we go to functions, uh, we can see that there will be a length. Uh, so there's a length method here. We can also see that there's going to be a when method. Uh, there it is, when method. Now this dot when and dot otherwise and gt and equal to, those are all defined in the column class. So if we go to the column class, um, catalog, nope, here, we can see that there's a when method. We can see that there's an otherwise method. Um, so these are kind of the those are the kind of the three really vital classes for you to have mastery of to understand how Spark code works. Um, you need to understand this data set class. You need to understand the column class and then the um, org Apache Spark SQL functions. So hopefully this, this video made sense. I'm going to put a, a link to this uh, blog post in the, uh, in the description. Uh, ping me if you have any questions and thanks for watching. Bye bye.